Well, good morning again. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing all right? Well, my name is Cliff Nunn, those of you who don't know me, and I am the church relations officer and chaplain at Wernley, a longtime friend of everyone here at the congregation who supported our, our kids and our mission. I know that several of you came a month ago, has it been a month, about a month ago, for a visit to our campus and hopefully got enlightened about some of the works that we do there on our campus. And I just had the opportunity to come and share with you this morning that there is still just a lot going on. There is a lot happening on the Wernley campus and you are all a part of it. You are all a part of it. Now, before I get too deep into my sermon, which, by the way, I have an email from Pastor Cal, and he told me, he said, now, Cliff, when you go to St. John, he says, you got about 10 to 12 minutes in your sermon, and he said, then you got to rush over to the church in West Alexandria. He said, but once you're there, go ahead and take an hour or two for your sermon if you want to. <laughs> well, you don't believe me? I've got an email. No. no, he didn't say that. In the back, as you exit, there is a table with some information on it about Wernley, and there's a fact sheet, and there's a prayer card, and some ink pens, and some various things that I invite you to take with you when you exit today. But one thing that I think is really, really exciting and really important that I want you all to take is this save the date postcard. Now in November, on November the 3rd at 11 a.m., that's a Saturday, and it's a long way off in the future, although it'll be here before you know it, because if you go into Hobby Lobby, they already have up Christmas stuff. So November's coming apparently real quick. But plan ahead. On November the 3rd, we are going to have a worship service on campus. Bishop Gaffian, Indiana, Kentucky, is going to be there. Bishop Dillahunt from Southern Ohio is going to be there. Bishop Allende from Northeast Ohio is going to be there. The only one we couldn't get was Bishop Bowden. But we got three out of four of our bishops coming to preside over a worship service on our campus. We are planning on between four and 500 people being on campus to worship and to celebrate the kickoff of our 140th anniversary, as well as the dedication of our new administration building. And I am so excited about the new administration building. Tomorrow morning when I report to work, I actually get to go to the new office. It's actually going to be up and online and functioning. And that may not sound like a big deal, but when you have spent the last two years in an office that every time it rains, your lights go out. <laughs> and every time the wind blows, whether your window is open or not, the papers blow across your desk and you have to weight them down. Moving into a new office building is really exciting. So we are looking forward to that. And it is a blessing, it is a gift. We procrastinated for many years on building an administration building. We just said no, because our funds need to go to the kids. Our funds need to go to our programs. So we said we're just not going to do that. Trying to be good stewards of that which God gives us, we said we're just not going to do it. Well, a family, sounds like it's raining, a donor family of ours came up to us and said, you know what? We appreciate that, but you guys need a new admin building. And they wrote a check, and they said, go build your admin building, and they gave us a check for $3.8 million. God is good. God is so good. So we are excited. So on November the 3rd, come out and worship with us. Come out and celebrate with us. 140 years of ministry and a new administration building. I'm so excited. All right. I get the opportunity to share a little bit about Wernley, but I want to do it from the perspective of our lessons this morning. The children's sermon tied in perfectly, except for the socks, which were quite distracting. I looked at mine. Mine are really bland compared to yours, but it was fun. The, the lesson, the gospel lesson this morning, when it talks about Jesus's family, wanting to restrain him, thinking he was possessed. I have struggled with that at times because I thought, how in the world can parents think that of their kid? How in the world can they be so concerned that they want to move out, get him, restrain him, and prevent him from doing ministry? And then I thought to myself, much as she explained in the children's sermon, well, it's because he was doing things they really didn't understand. 
He was performing miracles. He was wise beyond his years. He made the leaders in the temple look as though they knew next to nothing. I mean, he was doing things that the family just did not understand. So I thought, okay, so they want to confront him on that. Well, I'm going to flip the coin on you. At Wernley, on Tuesday evenings, we have a chapel service. I get the opportunity to hold a chapel service for our kids. We don't force them to attend. It's not mandatory. We would get our hand slapped by the state if we forced them to come. But we make it exciting, we make it fun, and we invite them to come. And we usually have 40 to 50 kids in attendance every Tuesday. And our kids come to us. It's an informal setting. I give a sermon. But many times in the sermon, right in the middle of it, I get, Pastor Cliff, I have a question. So I stop and I want to address their question. And many times the question is, why did my family do to me what they did? Pastor, you're telling me about a God that loves me. You're telling me about a God that wants the very best for me. Why am I here? Why does my life stink? Why does my life hurt? We get those hard questions right there in the middle of chapel. And I, I address them by helping them understand grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness, foreign concepts to our kids. They just have really no concept of it. To give you an example, we've got a sibling group. Eight, 10, and 14, I believe. Their parents, now I have to qualify this, I'm, I'm extremely blessed. There is no one in my family that struggles with addiction. And I understand in today's society that probably puts me in the minority of a lot of families because addictions are so widespread in our society. But I recognize how blessed I am. So I have a hard time relating to the depths that some people will go to satisfy their addiction. So these three siblings, their parents were both so consumed by their addictions that they sold these three children into prostitution. And then they decided they could even make more money if after they sell them into prostitution, they film it and sell it on the internet. I can't understand how parents can do that to their children. And those children sit in chapel and they say, why, pastor? Why did mom and dad do that? And that's a hard, hard question to answer. But I'm glad they ask it because that means they're struggling with it. And if we're not struggling to understand God's word and our place in his word and our place in his ministry, then I dare say we may not be moving forward as we should be in ministry. So I again... Talk about love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. And I talk about they have had adults that have been so consumed by their own life, their own addictions, their own problems, that they have failed to care for them as they should. They have failed to protect them. They have failed to love them as God intended them to be loved. And I help them understand their parents made bad choices. And that's not an excuse, it's just a fact. And then I talk to them about how God loves them. I talk to them about how God forgives them and how God is gracious to them and how God wants them to have a better life than they have started out with and how they have value. How they have value. And you all, because of your relationship with Wernley, are a part of that. The dollars that you send in, the gently used clothing that you collect, the body wash that you collect, the school supplies, the recreation equipment, all of those items are so important to what we do. Because I may have shared with you when I was here before, about a year or so ago, that we have a place called the store. And the kids who come to Wernley get to go shopping, because sometimes they come with only the clothes on their back. And sometimes those clothes are in bad shape. So all of the clothes that we receive, all of the rec equipment, all of the goodies that we get goes into the store, and the kids go shopping, and they have a great time. And they love it. And often if I'm down there, 
the kids will look at me and they say, Pastor, how does Wernley afford all of this? My goodness. And then occasionally one that's a little too smart for his own goods, he'll go, Pastor, did you guys steal this at Walmart? <laughs> no, we didn't steal it at Walmart. We get it from churches. And I explain to them that there are hundreds of churches that are feel, filled with thousands of people who think they have value and they give to these kids because they want these children to understand they are important and they are loved and they are valuable. And then the same little smart aleck whippersnapper says, well, if they knew me, they wouldn't think that about me. And I said, yes, they would. They would love you anyway. They would love you anyway because you are precious. God doesn't make mistakes. We are all precious and beautiful in his sight, made in his image. You're a part of that. You're an eternal impact on our kids. So after I go through all those little stories with them, usually before they leave, as they've got their bags full of clothes and they've got their new shoes and they're getting ready to head out the door, they'll look over their shoulder and they'll say, hey, pastor, next time you see those folks, tell them thank you. So thank you on behalf of all of the kids at Wernley. We've got a capacity of 70 kids, and I'm sorry to tell you that's not enough. We need to build more. We need to reach more kids because we have a waiting list to get in. But for those that we get the opportunity to touch, for those that you get the opportunity to minister to through your gifts, through your love, through your prayers, it's an eternal impact. It's an eternal impact because your gifts are a tangible act of love from our children's perspectives from strangers, because they don't get to meet you, that helps them realize they have value. That helps them realize they have worth. That helps them realize they can be successful and do something with their lives in spite of the challenge and the difficult start that they had at the beginning. So in closing, of course, I want to say again, thank you. I want to encourage you to continue to pray for our kids. Prayer changes things. I believe you all know that. Pray for our kids. There are some prayer cards on the table back there. Pick one up. Take it home. Put it somewhere where you'll see it. And when you do, pause and say the little prayer that's on the back of it. Come and worship with us in November. Come and celebrate we don't get the opportunity to have four or 500 Lutherans gathered under one roof in a worship celebration service very often and to get three bishops there as well. It's going to be a fun time. We've got a combined choir from the churches in Richmond that's coming. It's going to be a celebration, and I encourage you to come and be a part of that. Celebrate your part in the ministry of Wernley. Celebrate your impact on the lives of our kids at Wernley because that pair of gently used jeans, that bottle of body wash, that basketball that you've given may not seem like that much, but it's huge. It's impacting. It's powerful, and it changes lives. So come and walk our campus. Come and celebrate with us. I thank you from everyone at Wernley for all that you do for us. I thank you from all of our kids for everything that you do and everything that you share. And may God continue to bless you and this congregation as you move forward. Amen.